our relationship with our European partners is about to change. This will have effects on all areas of life from food production to atomic research. Here to discuss the impact on the fight against economic crime, uh, we have a distinguished panel of guests. So to some extent, the Brexit situation that we find ourselves in now is a repetition, in fact worse, than uh, the situation that we found ourselves in back in 2013. So it's interesting to know we're in this, the situation where we have looked very extensively, the government uh, and civil servants involved have looked very extensively at what we were committed to, and we decided to opt back into a range of useful measures, which we are now currently in, but we're now in a situation where we have to consider if we do leave uh, the European Union, as, we, as the referendum said we shall, what we can do in terms of regaining any benefits of those instruments if we are outside the European Union, how we can perhaps be part of them in some sort of semi-detached way. The government has said, though, that they're proposing some form of bold strategic agreement that provides a comprehensive framework that will be able to deal with future security law enforcement and justice cooperation. Um, some sort of treaty, and that is the ambition. Quite how it is going to be achieved, particularly within the apparent two-year transition period, is very difficult to understand or anticipate. Um, and I think that Brexit is bound to lead to a change. Um, in Europol, for example, if we, we leave um, the European Union and leave Europol, it's likely that I think we will be, remain in some way part of it, or at least as an observer. But it's unlikely, and indeed it's the same with many of the other organisations within the European Union, it's unlikely that uh, the UK will have any real management influence. It will not be a member of the management board of Europol, for example. So the setting of strategy, the key decisions that are going to be made about um, focus and about development within organisations like Europol and indeed Eurojust uh, will be, will miss, the UK will be missing out on influencing that and influencing it in a way that might help our own priorities and our own strategies. So currently, even with the UK being an EU member state, we are in a situation where current domestic UK law is incompatible with EU law. And I think this is really the elephant in the room, because if the UK has any chance in being associated with any EU database, then it will be subject to an assessment by the European Commission that the UK provides an adequate level of data protection in the domestic law. This is, I think that we need to be realistic. And I think we need to be uh, very careful about the, and very conscious about the impact of EU law and domestic law on the day after, regardless of the formal powers of the Court of Justice. If there is Brexit and the UK wants really to have cooperation with the European Union on the European arrest warrant or on similar issues, it will have to apply the EU acquis as a whole. Mm. So in a paradoxical position, Brexit will bring higher compliance yes. and more complete yes. compliance of the UK with EU law than it does today. That brings us on to another topic we all love, particularly if I can get this to work. DPAs, and I know you talk of little else. <coughs> so, big one, which we all struggle with, does a DPA qualify as being akin to a criminal penalty? After all, isn't it just the company being let off? Why shouldn't they be done for it again round the world? This, if you're advising corporates, is a really hot topic, and I will, at the end, come back, obviously, to Standard Bank briefly as well. Just a quick reminder, as you all know, in the US, they really don't care at all. There is absolutely no legal protection against further prosecution of a personal corporation already prosecuted outside the US. It's kind of, yup, yeah, and so what? That said, and this is where I said I would go to and, in fact, end with, as you know, in Standard Bank, and Jane Stay and others in particular, achieved a very good result in that they did manage to get a global settlement for Standard Bank with careful negotiation with the DOJ. So, where does this end up? Nebis in Edem is 
a really important principle within the EU. The UK has always been reluctant to embrace it, being quite jealous about our own jurisdiction and saying it's really got to be a criminal penalty, not an administrative one. And the directions of travel are in flat opposite directions. The EU, if it adopts the Advocate General's advice, will go much further and be very purposive and will definitely count administrative penalties. France, depending on what their Court of Appeals does, may say even US or UK DPAs might qualify. And I think we will take a much more restrictive view. That will be the legal position, whether as a matter of pragmatics, it's going to be possible to do deals in the way that Tesco did, remains to be seen. But for all of us advising corporate clients, as we do, we're going to have to say you're going to have to tread with extreme caution if you actually want to achieve that global settlement. What we, what we need to think about are the big changes that we will effectively be generating by not being part of these systems. Um, I think that there will be difficulties with the attitudes of other member states. The, the trust and confidence that I talked about earlier um, may well disappear. In the past, collaboration and cooperation in the 70s, 80s and 90s relied on the little black book of the individual who was working abroad and who got to know people who put these, their telephone numbers, their email addresses or whatever in, in that little black book um, and contacted them if they had an issue. Nowadays things have changed dramatically. There are tables around which sit key players who can contact across the table or across the corridor um, people with the ability to help them in individual cases. Um, there's going to be a lot of negotiation to try and replicate this sort of situation if we are not part of these organisations. And it's difficult to see how that might end up in practice. And uh, it only remains for me to thank Jones Day for hosting this and for organising these excellent speakers, myself not included. Um, and I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation to the speakers and indeed to Jones Day. <laughs>